Monday, April 8th, I'm experimenting at Mom's house where I'm visiting in Chicago, and let's hope to God my microphone's working, because I don't know if it is. Let me pull up my chat here for YouTube. Hang on. Chat. There you are. And you guys need to let me know if this is my good mic or not today, because I have no idea. And I don't think I can adjust it either. <laughs> We're just going to make life fun. Ugh. So confusing doing things from over here. All right, let me see what my chat goes on. All right, hey, guys. Um... Let me see. First of all, if my mic is working, if it's the computer mic, or the, it should be this mic. Actually, let me make sure the other mic is turned off. All right, that mic is off. All right, it should just be my good mic now that's on, but I don't know if you can hear it or if it's any good. Let me know. And then I'll get TikTok going in a second once we know if this mic is any good. <clears throat> I brought an old mic that I had from D.C. to try to get the mic better since last time we had lots of microphone problems. But I have no idea if it's working let me know how it sounds guys i know it always takes about 10 seconds for you to catch up with me um so what do you think yeah and again is is this does it does it seem like the uh like this is the mic this is the thing that's working and not the computer if i get closer beep, 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 sorry the mic is right here if i get closer and i get farther away okay good oh good so it's working all right good good well yeah because i i have an old mic that I had in DC in my closet and because my mic here was not working well. Remember last time we had lots of microphone problems, so I decided I would I would bring it with this time. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's working, so good. All right, let me get TikTok rolling and we will get started, guys. Hang on here, TikTok. I need to shift over one second here from all right, live. Got the lighting. It's, oh, I didn't have the light on here. That, that might help, too. I, mean, I don't know if I need it, actually. Well, once the sunset starts to go down, although the sun may not go down too badly here. Let me see. So I'm playing with the uh, the lighting at Mom's again. Uh, oh, it's a little too bright. I don't know if we need this. Like, for right now, uh, I'm looking on my TikTok side. I don't know that this lighting makes too big of a difference. Hey, guys. Hey, Misha. Sorry, guys. Still kind of experimenting a moment here. It's just very bright with the light coming in from outside. Yeah. Oops. What am I doing here? Sorry. As you know, we've got to... Ooh, see the way too bright there. Well, I don't know if it's making that big of a difference. I don't think it is. All right. I'm going to leave the light on low. We'll leave it on low so at least it fills in a little bit just in case... Things are bad. Um, hang on. Ukraine war update. Let me get my TikTok ready and we will go. Ukraine update. There we go. Hang on, guys. Hitting a live goal and then we are set. Um, hang on here. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what that one is. We will put that in there. Um, all right. Oop, one second here. Okay, sorry guys, you know how this is. Oop, come on. <laughs> there we go, trying to set stuff up at my mom's. Hang on. Oops, one second, writing Callum a note on... Oops, on signal. All right, all right, there we go. All right, let me get rolling here for TikTok. Confirm. Go live. Okay. Yeah, the lighting. Yeah, we'll deal with the lighting. Big deal. Always the lighting is always a bit funny here at Mom's. Um, a microphone is in use. What does that mean? All right. It was claiming my microphone is in use or something weird over at TikTok. I don't know what the hell that meant. Is my mic not working? We shall find out. All right, TikTokers, you got to let me know if you can hear me since it claims my mic isn't working or something. Come on, TikTok. I don't know what that meant, but let's see. All right, uh, Ash, can you guys hear me okay? You hear me? Okay, good. It claimed my mic wasn't working on TikTok, and I was like, huh? <laughs> like, all right. I did see the eclipse, yes. We had a, a nice eclipse in Chicago today. It wasn't 100%. It was 94%, which was still very nice. Thank you, Taylor, for the gift. Um, we. Uh, it was very cool. I mean, the thing is, you really have to see 100% for it to be dark, but... It was noticeably darker, which I thought was interesting. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Chazak. Um, it was noticeably darker in D.C., which is very interesting. My microphone's being used by another app. What is it talking about? 
Okay, as long as you guys can hear me on TikTok, that's fine. TikTok's giving me all these warnings about viewers can't hear you. Your microphone's being used by another app. And it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, oh, you know what it is? Oh, no, not the headset. Does it have a microphone? Could it be my headsets? I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, as long as it's working, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, John S. for the gifts. Thank you, Ava and Kathy. Ooh, all right. Yeah, we're not going to worry about it. It says it's working. Exactly. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, no, so the eclipse was very cool today. Um, we were going to drive down to Indiana where it was 100%. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Colin. But unfortunately, <laughs> the traffic just started getting really bad. It was like a three and a half hour drive. And then we started thinking, what's the drive like going to be on the way home if it's three and a half hours there? Would everybody leaving at the same time? So we just gave up. Oh, Fred, it was, oh, it was cloudy. Oh, that's too bad. At least, I mean, it was totality, which is kind of fun. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Adventures. Thank you, Ernie. Oh, and Ava with the cool new gift. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, it was really hit or miss because, like, I've got friends in Austin who I should have called having said that. It was cloudy, and you could, at one point, the sun peaked out, but that was it, you know? So I'm not sure it would have, you know, I'm not sure I would have picked the right place to go, basically. Or Southern Illinois, I could have, but I would have had to book it a year in advance, which I really should have. It was stupid not to. Um, yeah, Buffalo, New, Northern New York, I would have thought would have gotten really dark. Your friends, your grandson freaked out. My dog actually freaked out a little. Yeah, Ohio. Oh, Ohio was clear. Oh, that's good. I mean, I knew Ohio had the eclipse. I didn't know. I, I just wasn't sure about the weather. And you got the full eclipse. Where was that dark Phoenix? That's nice. Um, Rochester was clouds. Oh, so was the, um, was Niagara Falls clouds then? I'm assuming. Because I know Niagara Falls was 100%. Um, yeah, no, anyway. I mean, Chicago got darker, which was interesting. Indianapolis was awesome. Oh, I was going to go, Daniel, and I just, my nephew and I were looking at the travel time. It got up to like three hours and 20 minutes, and we were like, eh. And I just got worried what it was going to be like driving home. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Adventures. So we said no because we just didn't want to get stuck in a seven-hour traffic jam, but I'm still really bummed, you know? Ugh, wait until I'm 80 years old now. Oh, well, it was stupid. I mean, literally like two eclipses in a row in Southern Illinois was stupid for me not to have booked one of them. You know, yeah, I'm visiting my mom in Chicago, so background is different. Anyway, so welcome, everybody. Um, so, um, well, we were going to, but we just got really worried about six or seven hour traffic. It isn't just traffic. The drive going there was three and a half hours. <laughs> coming back would have been much worse it's not a little traffic <laughs> that's the thing i agree i i you know it just we just didn't want to get stuck in like five or seven hour traffic which i was that's what i was afraid we we're gonna get stuck in anyway anyway what do you do all right guys welcome so i am john arvosis welcome to the show uh, this is my weekly show, Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time U.S., where we talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Um, oh, you did? Oh, good, Max. Glad to hear it. Yep, I sent a ton of stuff out yet last week, so that's good. Um, yeah, we talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Take your guys' questions. Uh, the way the show works, I will go through the news for the first half of the show. Second half of the show, I'll take your guys' questions, your comments. I also try to kind of peruse what you guys are writing as I'm talking. It's just... You know, I've got a lot of notes to talk through first, so it can be difficult sometimes to get through stuff. But anyway, um, but anyway, so welcome, guys. Um, I do leave Thursday night, actually, for Asia for two weeks. So I will be posting videos while I'm in Asia, but I will not be doing the show. Um, I will be checking in, so I'll do hangouts, but kind of random, since the time change will be radically different. Thank you for the hearts there, Terry. Um, you know, so... We'll kind of we'll kind of wing it, but I'll be putting up videos at least, sort of a travel log videos on TikTok and YouTube, so you guys can follow what I'm up to. So that'll be fun. But that's Thursday night, so I'll be doing this through Thursday. Thank you, Pedro. I should be doing a show Thursday. I should be. Um, I'm planning on it at least. So we shall see. Thank you, Hazel. All right, guys, let's get rolling. Um, so yeah, as always. Thank you for the gifts on TikTok and YouTube. Uh, please do keep them coming. I do this full time, as you guys know, so your gifts quite literally pay the bills. So I'm counting on you. So please help if you can afford it. If you can't, don't worry about it. But if you can, the TikTok gifts, the YouTube gifts, the memberships are great. So appreciate. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Kevin. Martin again. Um, but the uh, the the memberships and uh, subscribers are also great too, where you can become a paid monthly subscriber. Um, that way, you can also join our weekend show, which I will be doing when I get back from Asia. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Jen. Um, I do a show every weekend, pretty much every weekend on Saturday mornings 
11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. for uh, the paid sub- monthly subscribers. But um, I'm not going to be doing it the next two Saturdays because I'm going to be traveling. But then after that, I am. Thank you, Incredible and Dark Dark Phoenix both and Ernie. Um, all right, guys, let's get rolling. All right, we're ready. I'm ready. Hey, Doug in Oregon. Uh, let's get to rolling. So um, Washington Post is reporting, uh, you know, Trump is denying it, but, you know, you know, that um, Donald Trump has privately said he could end, well, we know this, publicly Trump has said, you know, I could end the war in Ukraine in 24 hours. Thank you, Hazel. And uh, what came out was Trump has been telling people privately that his plan, his big plan to end the war in Ukraine is to force Ukraine to give up uh, Crimea in southern Ukraine. Hey, dropping things. To give up Crimea in southern Ukraine to the Russians, which they stole in 2014, and Donbass region, which is like eastern Ukraine over here-ish, to give to Russia. And the idea is somehow the Russians will, you know, no longer go to war with Ukraine, which is ridiculous. Um, there's a number of problems here. I mean, first of all, Russia controls all of this area. They don't just control this and this. Any thought the Russians are going to give this up is garbage. They're not going to give it up. Um, second of all, the war in Ukraine is not a territorial dispute. Well, there's several problems here, right? Um, I mean, it's not a territorial dispute. It's not like Ukraine and the Russians were arguing over some land. The Russians want Ukraine. The Russians consider Ukraine to be a fake state. The Russians consider Ukraine to be part of the Soviet Union, which it was. And the Russians feel like they, and they were, frankly, the Russians were the country or was Russia was the country running the Soviet Union. They were the big bad guys. It was them in charge. Everybody else were basically hostages with, you know, for all intents and purposes. Certainly the citizens were hostages, even the citizens of Russia, but, um, but the, um, uh, the where's I going with this with the Russians? Oh, um, uh, beep, 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 beep. oh, with Kiev, yeah. So the fact that the Soviet Union dissolves in 1991 ceases to exist. The Ukrainians break free. The Baltic countries break free. Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, right? Lots of other countries break free of the Soviet Union and basically breaking free of the Russians. Well, the Russians want them back. The Russians don't want them to go. The Russians want the land back. The Russians think they own the land. Um, the Russians have said at the beginning of the war that they don't think Ukraine is even a real country, that they think Ukraine is, um, basically the Ukrainians are deluded, that the Ukrainians, the, the Russians say that the Ukrainians, you know, need, need, this was literally the beginning of the war, the Russians said this. I remember reporting this to you guys and going, I can't even believe this. At the beginning of the war, the Russians saying, the Ukrainians are deluded into thinking they're Ukrainians and they're really Russians. And we, the Russians, just need to explain to them that they're really Russians and everything will be okay. So, Russia, this isn't a territorial dispute. This isn't something Trump can come in and say, oh, well, you know, you can't, you can't agree about your border. Let's do this. It is literally the Russians wanting to take all of Ukraine and make it part of Russia because they think it already is part of Russia. You can't negotiate that away. If the Ukrainians were to give up Crimea in the south, Donbass in the east, the Russians would simply come back for more. And they did, by the way. The Russians invaded in 2014, took Crimea in the south. They then invaded again in 2022, took the you know eastern areas of Ukraine. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I, I, this Anyway, bottom line is Trump's proposal won't work, first of all, because it won't stop the Russians. The Russians will simply say, OK, this is great. Right. We'll take we'll take the land you're giving us. We'll stop fighting, which is great, because if the fighting stops, the Russians stop dying. They stop losing tanks. They can just start building up more missiles, more tanks, and build up for the next eight years and invade again and take the rest of Ukraine. Second problem, from Ukraine's perspective, it's political death to give up these territories. Why would Ukraine give up part of its land to Russia when Russia, when, when Ukraine didn't do anything wrong? Right? Ukraine didn't do anything wrong. The Russians just invaded to take the Ukrainian land. So from Ukraine's perspective, they're going to give up their land in the south and their land in the east. Why exactly? Knowing the Russians are going to invade again in eight years. So anyway, we're talking about the Washington Post article about Donald Trump saying, uh, revealing Trump's big secret plan for you to end the war in Ukraine, which is basically giving Putin big chunks of Ukraine, which, you know, uh, from a national security perspective, has got a lot of people worried. The article talks about this because basically you don't want to reward Putin for what he's doing. Because if you reward him, He's going to do it again and say, okay, this is great, right? I mean, again, final point is if you're Putin, you look at this going, well, this is kind of worth it, right? Putin doesn't really care if a lot of soldiers die and a lot of, you know, a lot of his own troops die, right? Um, from his perspective, he wants land. And if Putin can get the land because Trump's deal is to give the land away to, Ukra- to, to Russia, then Putin says this was worth it. I'm going to do it again. And every dictator in the world 
looks at it and says the same thing. Hey, I can go in, I can do horrific war crimes, which we know Putin did because the International Criminal Court has literally put out an arrest warrant for Putin because of the war crimes he's done in, in, in Ukraine. It's not me saying it, it's the International Criminal Court that says he committed war crimes. Anybody around the world is going to say, well, I'll go in and commit war crimes and grab land because I'm not going to be held responsible, right? So anyway, not a very good thing here. Um, the uh, Russian missile ship. So this is an interesting story. We don't have anything on this yet, but a Russian missile ship was set on fire near Kaliningrad. Um, Kaliningrad, I don't have my my other map with me from Ava because I'm in Chicago uh, visiting mom, but Kaliningrad is a little Russian province that is in the middle of Europe. Right, the rest of your rushes to the east, and you go in and you get like you know Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and right. I'm trying to think here. If you've got Poland, I'm going to go Kaliningrad, kind of here. You've got Lithuania, Poland, Kaliningrad. Then you got the the Baltic Sea, and you've got Sweden over here. It's this little bit of Russia that's just like stuck in the middle of like Poland and Lithuania. Well. The Ukraine. This was interesting. The Ukrainians report this that a missile ship, a Russian miss, a Russian missile ship, caught fire in Kaliningrad. Now the Ukrainians are clearly insinuating that they did it. Very interesting because of the distance from Ukraine. I mean, very interesting. Um, so who knows how they did this? But it's it is uh, it's good news in the sense of it's another piece of evidence of sort of the long arm of Ukraine, which is great. You know, in in striking back at the Russians. Um, another sort of interesting little story here, but I think this might be a sign of more unrest inside Russia, which is interesting. But Molotov cocktails, which are basically right like uh, gasoline bombs, basically, um, were thrown at the Russian embassy in Lithuania. Um, two attacks occurred on April seventh, and then again on April eighth. Um, you know, no more information on it, but. Interesting. Actually, I should say it was the Russian embassy in Lithuania, so it's not internal unrest in Russia. It's you know people not very happy in Lithuania. But interesting story. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, so kind of a not a good story. Uh, Sky News was reporting on a number of um, the uh, well, nothing I can do about it, Jens. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone is what it is. There is literally nothing I can do to it. It just, it just, I'll try to stop moving, but it, it, this microphone for you guys on TikTok is its own thing, but the microphone for YouTube, I can't adjust it. Now, YouTube should hopefully adjust the mic itself, but bleh, like I said, nothing I can do about it. Okay, hopefully it's good for you guys. All right. Yeah, if I move close, it's going to be louder anyway, because that's how microphones work, but I will try to talk just from here. Um, so, Sky News was reporting on a report from uh, some senior Ukrainian officials, military officials, giving a not very good uh, or not very positive take on how the war is going. But, you know, you know, the truth is the truth. So here we go. Um, per Sky News, a number of Ukrainian military officials last week offered a grim assessment of the situation on the ground as Russia takes the upper hand. High-ranking officers who served under ousted Commander-in-Chief General Volzeluzhny told, oh, this is it from Politico, told Politico there was a great risk of the front lines collapsing wherever Russia chose to focus its offensive. They warned that Russia was gathering resources and should be ready to launch a big attack around August or potentially sooner. It it will likely be able to penetrate the front line and to crash it in some parts. Thank you, Kim. Now, I will say we've been seeing kind of conflicting stories in that we are constantly seeing stories that are saying um, that are saying the Russians will not be able to launch a big counteroffensive this summer. The, the experts think they're not going to have the manpower and the weapons to do that. We are also seeing a lot of the experts saying, but there is a lot of concern of the Russians being able to punch through the Ukrainian front lines uh, because the Ukrainians are, you know, they're tired, they're low on men, they're certainly low on artillery and equipment. Um, and it, it, so it's, it, it, you're going to see kind of where I am seeing constantly both stories out there. And I think what they're saying is that, you know, the Ukrainian lines are not very strong right now. The Russians cannot get a huge force together, but the Russians can get a decent force that's going to be doing some damage and pushing through the lines. So that's... You know, it's still not good news. That's what I think this story is referring to. Uh, a little more news here. Um, there was a Washington Post article, Washington Post article today about Russian propaganda efforts. Uh, very interesting, long article. Very hard to summarize just because it gives you a lot of examples of what the Russians are doing. But it's all about how, thank you, Jan Thomas, it's all about how the Russians are um, using social media to sow propaganda to undermine the West. And it's to undermine 
all of us, you know, regular citizens. It's to undermine political leaders. It, it was interesting reading the article because um, I have lost a lot of weight. Nice for you to notice, Welsh. Thank you. I mentioned to my mom today, I said, you know, I've lost about 10 pounds. And she goes, really? <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, like, <laughs> mothers who will always notice when you gain a pound, right? But you lose 10 pounds and it's like, eh. <laughs> but yes, I've lost about 10, I had 10 extra pounds. Now I'm, now I'm getting close to my normal weight, which is good. I, I appreciate you noticing. So thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I've actually still got a little extra for my, my good weight, but you know, this is, this is good. Exactly. I'm, I'm ready for Bali. Um, and thank you for the gift there. Love my, so, oh, anyway, so the story was interesting because it's, I'm just going to read you two paragraphs from the Washington Post story about the Russian disinformation campaigns. Um, it, 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 as I said, it's all about how they're trying to influence uh, American officials. Now, actually, I hope... Oh, hold on. I better have taken this with me or I'm going to be pissed. Oh, no. Let me see. I had a quote that I put here. Oh, I do have it here. Excellent. You know what? Let me start with the quote. You don't have to start with. These two stories go together. I'm going to start with a quote from... The uh, from Representative Mike McCall, who is uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee. He's the uh, head of the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House of Representatives. So the you know Foreign Relations Committee of the U.S. House, controlled by Republicans. He's a Republican. Um, he's a very good Republican. He's a good on uh, national security Republican. Listen to what he said to uh, Puck News, which is an American uh, sort of a new a, a startup news site last week. Listen to this. Now, mind you, this is a senior Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives who runs the Foreign Affairs Committee. So he's like the top Republican on foreign affairs in the House of Representatives. Listen to this. He says, I think Russian propaganda has made its way into the United States, unfortunately, and it's infected a good chunk of my party's base. He's talking about the base of the Republican Party and saying that a good chunk of them have been infected with Republican propaganda, uh, particularly with regards to Ukraine, but in general, uh, with uh, not Republican, excuse me, has been infected with Russian propaganda. Very, now, again, all of us agree with that. Thank you, Dark Phoenix. All of us agree with that. But very interesting for a senior Republican to be, a, and, and again, a foreign affairs leader, some of the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, to be admitting that publicly. Um, especially when you're talking about the base of your party, the base are the, are the diehard supporters, right? Thank you, aviation. I mean, think about that. You're admitting that the core of your party, the core of your supporters have been, have been duped by the Russians and they're parroting Russian propaganda. Now, another GOP rep, the other top guy on foreign affairs in the house of representatives, uh, this is, uh, Mike Turner. Thank you, Hedge. This is Mike Turner, who is, the um, and thank you, Aviation. I don't know if I had mentioned that, but if I didn't, I'll, or if I did, I'll mention it twice. Thank you for the gift. Um, the other Republican is Mike Turner, who is chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, so the, the committee dealing with intelligence, CIA, you know, all this spy stuff around the world. He was asked about that quote from McCall, the other Republican, saying that that a large uh, you know portion of the Republican Party base has been infected with Russian propaganda. Mike Turner, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Republican, agrees. Listen to this. He tells this on CNN yesterday. It was absolutely true that some Republican members of Congress were repeating Russian propaganda about the invasion of Ukraine. That was a second point. When he was talking about the infected with the information, they went on to say a lot of Republican members of Congress are repeating more Russian propaganda. The chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, a Republican, says that is absolutely true. Uh, a number of House Republican members of Congress are in fact repeating Russian propaganda about Ukraine. He said, quote, We see directly coming from Russia attempts to mask communications that are anti-Ukraine and pro-Russia, some of which we even hear being uttered on the House floor. So he's saying that actual Russian propaganda messages that are pro-Russia and anti-Ukraine are being parroted by Republican members of Congress. Now, that leads me to the other story, Washington Post. So I'm going to read this in the Washington Post, uh, the first two, or two of the paragraphs, talking about, it's a very interesting story, but talking about the actual Russian efforts to use social media to trick you into thinking we're hearing from our fellow citizens, but they're actually Russians, and they're actually Russian spies. Now, what was interesting in reading this article is, I'm listening to this, and I'm literally thinking of the kind of people we deal with during the show, 
or the kind of people like the comments on TikTok I'm often, often dealing with that literally are parroting this exact thing. I mean, on TikTok all the time, I've got people going, we should spend the money at home. And I'm reading this. That was in the article. That was in the article, right? We should spend, we should worry about our own border. That was in the article. It's actually a Russian. When you hear somebody say we should worry about our own border, it actually was a Russian talking point. The Russians created that talking point. Listen to this. So let me read this to you really quick from the Washington Post. In an ongoing campaign that seeks to influence congressional and other political debates to stoke anti-Ukraine sentiment, Kremlin-linked political strategists and trolls have written thousands of fabricated news articles, social media posts, and comments that promote American isolationism, stir fear over the United States border security, and attempt to amplify U.S. economic and racial tensions. According to a trove of internal Kremlin documents obtained by a European intelligence service and reviewed by the Washington post one of the political strategists for instance this is the russian employee right instructed a troll farm employee working for his firm to write a comment of quote no more than 200 characters in the name of a resident of a sub suburb of a major american city so he gave this he the russian leader gave another russian at his troll farm the assignment to write a comment you know, on social media of no more than 200 characters in the name of a resident of a suburb of a major American city. So imagine he literally says, okay, you're an American, you're, you're a suburban, you're from a big city. I mean, they're, they're literally going to that kind of detail when they're creating this stuff. Okay. The strategist suggested that this fictitious American quote, doesn't support the military aid that the U S is giving Ukraine and considers that the money should be spent defending America's borders and not Ukraine's borders. He sees that Biden's policies are leading the U S towards collapse. Guys, we have no idea how many of these people we deal with online are fake. This is why, thank you, Sean, this is why I am so aggressive with going after trolls, among other reasons. Um, I have been moderating online communities since 1995. I am very good at it. Um, I can smell a troll, meaning, and when I say a troll, I mean a fake. It's a fake account. They're not real people. Um, they might be real people, but they're literally working for somebody else. Um, they're not people who are literally here and simply disagreeing. They're people who, uh, thank you, Salvador, people who are pretending to like agree or disagree, but they're actually working for someone. Um, it, it, it really, but I mean, I read stuff like that and it's like, God, I, I just... Yeah, Gunerman says, I had one earlier with someone pretending to live in London. I mean, my favorite is that you can always hear the accent. You know, now, I will say, you know, we, we get Americans who immigrate from everywhere, so people have accents. But these guys are never immigrants. These guys always pretend to be, you know, um, always pretend to be blonde-haired, blue-eyed Americans who have been here five generations, and their English is heavily foreign-accented. And you can tell totally when you read it. It's just fascinating. Um, in any case, very scary stuff. Very scary stuff. Um, yeah, well, Crystal, you're about to go, so that's okay. Um, oh, yeah. What? Yeah, you are going, Crystal. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, I just don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the problem. These guys just aren't. The thing, too, think about it, guys. Do you think some real American is trolling TikTok? I've got my live, and they decide to come to the live and hang out to give the comment, I don't want my money going to no foreign war. I mean, I, I just don't believe real people are doing this. I just really don't. I mean, occasionally, maybe, but some woman just joining a lie. I, I just, you know what I mean? It's a really weird, it's really weird. It's really weird. Um, in any case, let's move on. So um, Zaporizhia, something really weird going on with the nuclear plant. Having said that, the source is Russia, and you can't trust Russia on literally anything. Um, Zaporizhia nuclear plant is more or less up here. Okay, tip of it's right here, controlled by the Russians. It's Ukraine's largest nuclear plant, uh, controlled by the Russians. And, the, you know, the Russians are claiming, but keep in mind, the Russians lie about all this stuff. There is zero reason to believe anything the Russians say about the war. Zero. Zero. I mean, literally zero. Okay, so... I'm not going to tell you the details because there's no way they're telling the truth. But, you know, the Russians are claiming, oh, the nuclear plant got attacked three times. There's debris on it. 
The International Atomic Energy Agency is worried about it. Understandable, right? Sort of the arm of the United Nations. Yeah, the U.S. doesn't lie to Wilt. They really don't, Wit. They really don't. Um, we've talked about this a lot before. Um, the All governments lie sometimes. But here's, here's the thing. Have you heard of a pathological liar? And do you believe pathological li liars exist, is my question. And I'm going to suspect the answer has to be yes, because otherwise... Honestly, you'd be crazy or <laughs> if you didn't think that some people are pathological liars. Some people just lie nonstop. Other people, like all of us, tell white lies when we have to, right? If you've got to lie to help someone's feelings, you're like, how does my haircut look? And you say your haircut looks great. That's a lie, but it's a nice lie, right? Some people, like, I try not to lie. White lies, I will tell. Real lies, very rarely will I tell a real lie. It is only going to be to help someone. Thank you, Eddie. I do not like telling lies. Some people are pathological liars. Remember that George Santos guy in Congress? Remember how he just lied, like, nonstop? He lied about his mother dying in 9-11. He lied about being Jewish. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, Eddie. Right? Now I'm going to extrapolate to countries. Believe it or not, some countries are pretty honest. Some countries tend not to lie. It depends on their politicians, by the way. Some presidents, American presidents, have been pathological liars. Not that many. I can think of one. Literally pathological liar. Very little this man ever said was true. Most of the other ones, pretty true. They may not be the best presidents, right? Republican or Democrat. I don't think they lied a lot, really. Um, and when it comes to Russia, you're dealing with the extreme. You are dealing with a country that for, and I mean, I've studied Russia. I've studied the Soviet Union. I went to graduate school, you know, master's in foreign service from Georgetown and spent, you know, at the time, at the time mistakenly focusing on the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union literally ended right after I graduated from graduate school, but it helped a lot to learn about Russia. And as a matter of public policy, the Russian government lies. And they do it to a degree that you do not see in Western countries, certainly not in the developed Western countries in the U.S. Again, even with Donald Trump, Trump was pretty bad. Trump was pretty bad. Um, Trump, I'm not going to defend on the lying front. But other American governments, no. And Biden doesn't lie at all. No, Biden doesn't lie at all. Biden you may not like. But come on, Nikki Haley, she doesn't lie all the time either. There's a lot of Republicans who don't lie all the time. Honestly, I just think it's trolly, Dave. It's, it's trolly when people say, oh, Biden lies all the time. That's just, that, that you're being a troll. You may not like the guy, and that's fine. Thank you, Chris. But, but you know, I, I always, like I say, for this show, I expect you guys to be more intelligent. I expect you to be more mature. Thank you, Addy. Thank you, Chris. Um... And I don't play those, you know, Republicans are bad, Democrats are bad kind of games that people play. I think it's immature. It's And we're not 13. Maybe you are 13, but this show isn't geared to a 13-year-old. <laughs> um, you know, I just, yeah. They're not all bad, though. That's the thing. They're not all bad. But they're not. They're really not. That That's part of the problem. The bad guys, the ones who lie, want you to think everybody lies. They want you to think that whether it's on a country level or whether it's on an individual politician level, right? The Russians would like nothing better than for you guys to think every country lies. Because guess what? Then it means they. Then it means you might actually believe the Russian lies, right? Because, well, Russia says A. America says B. Well, if every country lies, how can we believe America? Maybe the Russians are right, right? It's, it's, it is to the liar's advantage to convince you that everybody else lies too. Because then... You don't know who to believe. And if you don't know who to believe, now you're, this gets us back to that Washington Post article, right, about the propagandists, about the Russian propagandists working social media. If I can convince you everybody lies and everybody's, everybody's not telling the truth, now you don't believe newspapers anymore. Now you don't believe fact checkers. You don't believe the New York Times. You don't believe CNN. And by the way, as soon as I start saying it, just wait until the Republican trolls come and start saying, CNN, you can't trust CNN, right? That was part of the whole uh, it was part of a whole strategy to convince people not to believe the fact checkers. Don't believe the media. Oh, the media, you can't trust them. They st they try to tell us. Thank you, Paul, right? And they tell you that because the very people who tell you not to believe the media are the people preparing to lie to you. And that's why they don't want you to believe the mainstream media because they know the mainstream media is going to fact check them and they don't want you to believe the fact checkers. You know, it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence. The biggest, the sort of the the biggest liars that are out there are the people who, who um, who are also telling you not to believe the independent sources of information. Thank you, Macab. All right. Any case, so yeah, so the Russians are claiming the Ukrainians attacked the nuclear plant. 
there is zero reason to believe that's true. I would also add, thank you, Paul, thank you, Dale, that the, you know, the Russians are the ones controlling the nuclear plant. So, I mean, they're responsible for it. I would, it is just as likely that the Russians, you know, did something to the plant and in order to blame the Ukrainians, because also the Russians have done that repeatedly already anyway. You know, it's ridiculous. Um, anyway. Um, ah. Yes. D uh, D DG Den, I hope you're not suggesting that I said Biden never gets anything wrong. <laughs> we know Biden gets things wrong. And we know that all presidents will talk about things about economics, that the fact checker will say, well, you know, that's a lot different than being a pathological liar. You know, it, it just is. Um, all right. Um, Reuters. Uh, this is interesting. So the, the, the gas situation in Russia is getting worse. Gasoline, petrol, as some of you guys say. Um, the Ukrainians have done a very good job. Oh, Actually, you know what, Sky Queen? Let me start with Sky Queen first. Sorry, because Sky Queen just had a super chat question. Thank you for that. Sky Queen super chat was, uh, how do you explain to a Republican in America who is buying the Russian propaganda, oh, to a Republican who's buying the Russian propaganda, who believes it, that it's Russian propaganda? <laughs> I have a friend who's deeply down the rabbit hole and I can't get him out. I'm not really sure. I'm really not sure. Um, I mean, I, and you know what's funny? It's funny you say that because I have not seen a lot of explanation as to what do you do like we've seen explanation of what the truth really is right you know what stuff the russians are lying about with ukraine for example you know the russians put out a story a couple days ago claiming that you know Zelensky bought a castle from the king of england <laughs> and it was like no he didn't thank you sexy i mean he just he just didn't right they 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 always put this stuff out there and you can you can for example or marjorie taylor green who's one of the top two MAGA members of Congress, right? She came out today and claimed, claimed, the Ukrainians are oppressing Christians. Russia doesn't do that. In fact, Russia has been protecting Christians. Well, I've got news for you. In fact, the Russians have been, have been um, uh, throwing Christians in jail in Ukraine. The Ukrainians have been protecting them. What the Ukrainians clamped down on was the Russian Orthodox Church that's working literally with the Russian government. They're working as spies with the Russian government. The, the other Christians are totally fine in Ukraine. C Ukraine is a Christian country, right? I'm totally fine. What the Russians are doing in their occupied territories, the Russians have clamped down on every form of Christianity. They're also going after Jehovah's Witnesses and kicking them out. They've arrested priests. They've arrested the Jehovah's for sure and kicked them all out because they don't want any other church in the occupied territories in Ukraine than the Russian church. I mean, that's how bad it is. And again, what you would do is you can explain that to somebody. I would pull up some articles and show them and say, okay, we're going to take what you just said. Thank you, Tom. And I'm going to literally show you that what you said isn't true. You know what I mean? That, that, and, and the idea that the Russians are the ones protecting Christians in Ukraine, not even close to true. Not even close to true. Right? Absolutely untrue. The problem is I worry that once you get someone who is going to fall for Russian propaganda... I'm not sure you can, re I don't know how you reach them. Because what I worry about is you're probably a more simple person if you fall for that stuff. It's like people who fall for Alex Jones, people who fall for Joe Rogan. I'm sorry, but I, I think you're a more simple-minded person. People who believe in, people who sort of go for the cult. Thank you, Running. And I'm not sure how you break through when, basically, it's like someone joining a cult. How do you break through that, Right. How do you tell them it's all crazy stuff? I mean, guys, look at all the QAnon people. I don't even want to mention this stuff because our overlords over at TikTok will get upset even mentioning it, right? But you get all these people following these crazy cults. And how do you how do you even get through them and go, that's I, I was I I was talking to people not that long ago and trying to thank you, Olga, thank you, Lotus, and trying to explain to them like all that I don't even want to like I said, because of TikTok's weird rules, I don't even want to mention the cults, the political cults. But trying to explain to people, like, it's not true. And like, what do you mean it's not true? I'm like, there isn't some secret society in Washington, D.C. that abuses young people. <laughs> that's just like, no, that really doesn't exist. I've lived there 40 years. and That stuff doesn't really happen. They don't run the government. Thank you, Timothy. But but how do you, you know, I mean, but how do you how do you prove that to somebody? I really don't know. I, I, I Sky Queen, I wish I could tell you. Um. But as I said, you're, you're, you, know, you can try to prove like ind individual stuff. I, I just don't know. Thank you, Olga. 
I really just don't know. And that, that's sort of the beauty of what they're doing with this stuff. You know? It's really scary. No, it is delusional. It really is. Um, a couple more stories. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. So the um, oil, so gas, Russian, the Ukrainians have been blowing up Russian refineries. Uh, they destroyed somewhere maybe like 14% of Russian refineries at this point, And the Russians are having problems with gasoline. So they're, they're having to now import some from Kazakhstan. We knew they were importing some from Belarus. They're now importing it from Kazakhstan as well. They've stopped gasoline exports, which is all very cool. Um, so Ukraine's been having an impact on that, which is good. Um, the Germans, so two dozen German soldiers departed from Berlin on Monday morning to set up the first permanent German army base on foreign soil since World War II. Um, they're going to build two bases that will be ready by 2027, and will house 5,000 uh, German army personnel. This is in Lithuania, I believe I said. Um, did I say? I didn't, oh, I didn't say. I didn't say Lithuania. It's in. It's in Lithuania, I believe. Um, very interesting. The Russians are not happy. <laughs> oh well, what do you do? But um, you know, and, and but honestly, this is good because the thing is. As much as, you know, historically we worry about the Germans, we're not really worried about them now. And it's good for Germany to, I think, have a, uh, especially like a peacekeeping role with its neighbors, I think is a good thing. And it's a good thing for sort of German Germany historically and culturally to be involved in peacekeeping, so to speak. So that's good. But yeah, the Russians don't like it. It's like, oh, well. Um, finally, oh, that is it for the story. So finally, our auctions. So because I'm traveling... I did not bring the auction items with me, and my suitcase was even a little heavy when I came here. The auction items are in Chicago. I'm still doing the auctions for the next five weeks or four weeks that I'm traveling. Um, the What we do with auctions is I get cool stuff from Ukraine. I auction it off over at our Discord community, and then half the money I channel back to Ukraine with all the different fundraising we do, and half the money goes to support my work because I do this for free. And that's why I always hit you guys up and say, please give me the gifts on TikTok, on YouTube, the memberships. Um, I, I do this full time. You literally pay my bills, so please keep it coming. Um, but... Um, the auctions are very cool. I can't show, I realized I can't show you the items because they're on my iPad and my phone and I'm using the phone to do my YouTube chat with you guys because it's such better quality. But of course, now my phone and my laptop is locked up with with uh, with TikTok. So I can't show you guys. I may have to print, maybe I'll print pictures. Maybe I'll do that next time. But we've got a number of cool things. Some really cool woven Ukrainian socks that are woven by hand. They're beautiful socks. Um, a cool Ukrainian military patch that's been very, it's for uh, the internal security agency in Ukraine. Uh, very, very popular amongst the bidders. Um, a cool juniper pot holder, uh, a hot plate. Vlad got these in Ukraine. They're this, you know, sort of folkloric, uh, well, you can have folkloric. What do you call it? Folk kind of art that's made from juniper branches. And it's a hot plate for food. And it smells wonderfully because it smells of the wood, apparently, when you use it. Um, and finally, I mean, there's like about 12 things I'm auctioning. The um, trivets, is that what they're called? Trivets? I call them hot plates. Trivets. Okay. They're not hot plates. They're the things that you use when you put a hot plate of food on the table. Hot pads? Hot pad works. Okay. Um, and finally, the Baby Yoda shirts, which are my favorite. They're uh, uh, Grogu. And it's Grogu wearing uh, the Ukrainian, like the Ukrainian military patch, showing the Ukrainian um, uh, trident. And it's fabulous. And it's this, uh, these T-shirts. I think we've got a medium and an extra large. The sizes are over there over on uh, Discord. You'll see. But they're very cool. So do go check them out. Um, the, uh, the way to find the auctions, like I said, you can go to our Discord community. The... Uh, you guys on YouTube can find it at erevosis.com. Go to that link and you'll you'll see a list of links. Look for Discord. You guys on TikTok can go over to my profile page on TikTok and you'll see the link in there. You'll see the triangles pointing down, the red triangles at the link. Click the link and go in there, scroll down, and you'll see Discord. Click Discord. Oh, oh you want to go in there? So the, do the dog wants to go in the other room. One moment. Um, go to the Click it to go to Discord. my dog my dog decided she had to go in the other room i think she had to drink <laughs> it's like uh-oh don't 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 uh don't stop the dog from getting her water anyway trivet is the correct term not to be confused with tribbles yes tribbles trouble with tribbles all right guys so that is it for the show or for the news let's talk so give me give me what's going on thank you chazak for the gift 
Um, I know the dog. The dog runs the household. What do you do? Oh man, on the bat- on battalion POWs. What do you mean? I'm not sure what you're referring to, Darren. I haven't heard anything on POWs recently. Anyway, I mean they're they're no, I don't even think there was. I would say there were some bodies exchanged like a week or two ago, but I don't know anything about with POWs. Um. Um, I am not taking Sasha to Asia. I'm traveling with her here. Yes. Who is that? Allie. Thank you, Allie, for the gift. Um, Sasha is here with me in Chicago, but um, but she's not going to Asia. No, my sister's taking care of her. Uh, thank you, Jens, for the gift. Jens bought a gift membership that Soren was able to get. Very nice. Excellent. Thank you, thank you Jens. Um, do I think Russia's likely to attack the Baltics? You know, the concern is that someday they might try. Right now, they're probably not in great position because they're still worrying about Ukraine and, excuse me, and the Ukrainians have done a lot of damage to the Russian military, right? They've killed and hurt a lot of Russian soldiers. They've damaged a lot of tanks. So the, the Russians need to finish this war first. So I don't think they're in very good position to, you know, attack anybody else at the moment. But the concern is that the Russians build up and they take the lesson from the war in Ukraine as being America is now isolationist. Uh, the Republican Party under Donald Trump favors Russia, you know, even over our allies, um, and um, the doors open. There you go. You know, favors uh, Russia over our allies. Oh, don't don't do this already. Don't you dare. Oh God. All right, I knew this was going to happen. Dog, we're back to where we were before. Dog has to pee. <laughs> Remember, we're at mom's. All right, all right. Well, we're at mom's. I have to go take the dog out. Thirty seconds, guys. TikTok, we may lose you. <laughs> Let's see. This is like this. This always happens. One quick second, take dog. We did it. Woo! <laughs> so, hey, you know how it is when I'm in Chicago? She always does this to me. She always does this to me when I'm in Chicago. It's like a guarantee. The dog's got to go out, and you take the dog out. What do you do? Anyway, um, what were we saying, guys? I know I need some music on or something. What you can, go, you can push the door with your head. This is not rocket science. Do it. Go on. Oh, she doesn't know how to push the door. <laughs> she is smart, but sometimes... There! Go! Oh, my God. She's a actually a brilliant dog, but some things she doesn't know. And she can't figure out, for example, when the door... Like, there's a door over there. She can't quite figure out how to open the door. And it'll be open a little bit. I will show you guys. I say, you guys, it's hard to switch. The door will be open a bit, and she, she can just push her nose and knock it, but she can't. Like, she doesn't know how to do it, so she sits there and goes... Eh. It makes me feel guilty. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, to her, it is rocket science. Yes. Thank you, Kronos. Sorry. Thank you, Andy. Oh, my God. She cracks me up. Thank you, Maddie. I did see some gifts come in. I miss here. Um, what else, guys? Um, we were talking about the... Actually, we were talking... Well, we don't, we don't have to... Do, oh, thank you, Soren. Appreciate that. Thank you. Soren just made a very generous gift over on, t- on YouTube. Um Has it only been 30 years? I thought Rwanda was even... Wasn't Rwanda like... Rwanda wasn't the early 2000s. or the early 90, Was it early 90s? Maybe, I was going to say Rwanda I felt like was 40 or 50 years ago. Was it only 30 years ago? Um, 30, wow, okay. 94, okay, 94, but 94 was a while ago. Fair enough. Yeah, the 90s, okay. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking longer, but it wasn't 2000s. Yeah, I guess fair enough. 
Um, that is true. I didn't mention that, Deemer, that Trump, uh, we talked about the story at the beginning about uh, Trump's plan for Ukraine leaking out, that he was going to sacrifice you know, make Ukraine give up Crimea and uh, eastern Ukraine to the Russians. Trump is saying he didn't say, he never said that. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> I mean, Trump's entire adult political life has been saying things that weren't true. Just that. <laughs> I mean, Trump is equal to the Russians when it comes to they say something and you should just go, okay, great. Um, it is, I would trust much more three Trump employees going to the papers and telling them are going to be a lot more honest than Trump himself publicly going, I didn't say that. So I don't believe in a million years, um, Trump's denial, not, a, not in a million years. Yeah. So thank you, Linka, for the gift or the gift, sir. Thank you for that. Um, uh, yes, Charlie, there was a UN port the other, uh, report the other day about Russia executing POWs. Yes, it was about a week or two ago. Um, I think I mentioned it. Um, it was a, kind of a long, I, I was trying to get sort of a summary of the report, but um, they found that the Russians had um, executed at least, it, it said at least like 50 prisoners of war they were able to find that the Russians had killed. Um, and you don't just execute prisoners of war. That's like not acceptable. It's a war crime. Surprise. Um, and it was the United Nations uh, study, a report that actually found this to be the case, to be true. So very bad. Yeah, very bad. Um, when is the Trump's big next trial? Um, the next one, I think, is April 15th. That may be the one he's trying to stop by suing the judge now. So Trump is just suing the, one of the judges, <laughs> and it's considered a last-ditch, not-going-to-work effort, but nonetheless, you know. So, But I believe the, the earliest trial is April 15th. All the other ones are getting pushed back. He may, have, he may have succeeded in doing what he wanted to do. Most of Trump's trials, most of them, not all of them, are federal trials. And the federal ones, Trump can just order them, if he becomes president, he can just order them to stop, and they'll have to stop. So... Uh, this was not change of, oh, it was change of venue too, Andy. Yeah, it was change of venue, but it also was about changing the judge. The judge. Did they also, did they also strike that aspect down of the suit? Um, you know. <sighs> oh, well, ha. Fre Fred says Trump's made a lot of money for lawyers over the years. Not really, because Trump actually doesn't pay his bills. Trump has a history of not paying his bills. Um, Rudy Giuliani didn't get the money Trump promised him. <laughs> I mean, like, Rudy's in real trouble. Rudy's got, like, millions of dollars of debt that he needs from Trump. So, yeah, Trump actually doesn't just doesn't pay them. Or he, he says one of his big strategies is to renegotiate the bill. That basically, if you owe somebody a million dollars or $10 million, you tell them, I'll give you 100000 And basically, otherwise, they take you to court. And you say, okay, you want to spend the money going to court? Okay. You know, so... Yeah, that's our boy. That's our boy. Habas, did she get fired? Oh, no. Did she? Oh, that would be hilarious. That was Trump's lawyer who was just really bad. I mean, he, you know, he, classic Trump, he hired her because she was pretty on TV, basically, which is why Trump hires anybody, you know, a pretty woman on TV, classic, on Fox or wherever she was, you know. Um, but she did not seem to be a very good lawyer. And then he lost like the cases and he supposed that she was staying on. And we were like, Rrr. you know, yeah. Haba looks exactly like all of the rest of them, you know, thank you, Jonathan. I'm not on TV right now, but I try to, I, I, I try to look pretty on TV, but I also hope I get hired for things more for just than just being pretty on TV. I'm not going to hire a lawyer because they're pretty. <laughs> that 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 is the one reason that is going to be the last reason I hire a lawyer is because they're pretty, right? I want the lawyer if I'm in a criminal case, I want the lawyer that's going to win me the case, not the lawyer who's going to look pretty. You know. Um. Anyway, what else we got, guys? What else we got? What else? Words with the U.S. government today. I saw. Um. I mean, I saw some of that. I didn't see with the U.S. government. I just saw camera on like several statements today. Um. What else, guys? <clears throat> what else we got going? 
<sighs> oh, get a lawyer who is tough so you don't like them. I mean, you certainly don't get a lawyer just because they're pretty. I mean, that's just not what you do. You know, right. You get somebody who's tough. Exactly. Mexican embassy in Ecuador. No, what happened there? What happened there? Raw <laughs> story, he replaced Haba. Well, that's good. Well, Raw story gets it from somebody else, but still, that's uh, that's good. Huh? Oh, well, too bad. Too bad. Um, yeah, she was terrible. Mexico went in. I don't know what that means, Chuck. Mexican embassy in Ecuador. Ecuador invaded the Mexican embassy. Oh, God. Why? I didn't see that. Oh, for their ex-president? Oh, my. Hang on. I'm going to pull this up. Um, Mexican embassy in Ecuador. Oh, because he was there. He was there seeking political asylum or whatever. Oops, I'm typing this really badly. Oh, that was two days ago. That was two days ago. Mexico is breaking diplomatic ties with Ecuador after police raided its embassy in Quito to arrest former Ecuadorian Vice President Jorge Glass, who had been seeking asylum, confirming the move. Wow. Mexico decried the raid as an outraging... That's pretty bad. United Nations voice concern under diplomatic norms. Embassies are generally considered protected spaces. Wow. Wow. So Mexico granted political asylum to the Vice President, who served under leftist... Uh, da, 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 Convicted twice on corruption charges, Gloss said he is the subject of political persecution and been sheltering inside the embassy. Wow. Now, I don't know enough about um, Ecuador. Is this guy a political prisoner or was he corrupt? I don't know what's going on in Ecuador right now. I mean, they shouldn't be. You can't. You just can't raid an embassy, period. Um, wow. That's pretty bad. I mean that's very bad. Yeah, you don't you don't raid embassies. That like that's just the considered the big sin, you know. Yeah, but I mean I don't I sort of don't follow Latin America as much as I'm following this stuff throughout the week, so you know the day. But yes, um, yeah, you just don't. You know, but I was just curious though as to what the deal was with him. But uh, but yes, you don't uh, you don't go and invade embassies. Um, yeah, I mean it is an invasion of Mexico. It's sovereign land. It's Mexican territory. Yes. I mean, they literally invade. They didn't just invade Mexican territory. They invaded Mexican government offices on Mexican territory. That's that is an invasion of Mexico. Yes, it's very serious. Wow, 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 wow. I mean, I don't know enough about it. I mean, I saw that there were protests. Sword for Justice is talking about protests against Orban in Hungary, and I saw that there have been protests, but I don't know enough about them to know like, are they that big? Because a picture doesn't tell you anything. So so what if there's a hundred thousand people? I don't know what that means, right? If it, if it's, even if it is a hundred thousand, right? Is it really that many people? Does it matter? Is is it a sign of trouble? Or did these things happen in Hungary and nobody cares, right? I mean, so I, I don't know. I mean, somebody, you know, somebody from the region would have to tell me like, are these protests significant or is it like, eh, you know? Um. Oh, excuse me, you want you? <laughs> hmm. Well, there and the irony, Terry, is there still is a modern day Ortega, which is the funny thing. Ortega is also a modern day Ortega. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Jetta, for the gifts on TikTok. Appreciate it. Um, seems significant. Yeah, the uh, the Hungarian thing. Yeah, I just don't know enough about whether, like, whether you know. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting question. Sobo asks sort of, will, will the MAGA movement die if Trump loses and Republicans don't do well in November? <sighs> I think the cat's out of the bag. The problem is, if you have a president and a political leader who lies pathologically, who believes in political violence, who sides with America's enemies and hates America's allies, right? And tries to violently overthrow the government and steal the election and gets away with it basically. Why wouldn't his other his other fans try to do the same thing? Why I mean my biggest concern is why wouldn't a smarter Donald Trump next time try the exact same thing Trump tried when he tried to steal the election? 
Why not? Right? Um, that's my concern. Thank you, Frank Thomas, for the gift on TikTok. Appreciate that. And on, on YouTube, thank you. Um, but that's my concern, is I, I fear that he's opened a Pandora's box where where other people like him, and we know that J.D. Vance, I mean, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz just goes with the wind, you know? Um, but um, it's, yeah, no, I... I'm not cons- I'm not convinced. Excuse me. The move. I, look, Trump being around doesn't help, right? But I'm not convinced. You know, if and when Trump is gone, the movement goes away. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. I mean, his kids are goofballs. You know, what I mean, his sons and his daughter they can't carry a political movement because they're goofs. You know, but but you know, will the Marjorie Taylor Greens finally be repudiated? I mean, J.D. Vance. He won senator. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I mean the diehards, the diehards will refuse to believe the truth. The question is, will a majority of Republicans give up on the crazy stuff if Trump were to be gone? Maybe. But I worry, like I said, that Republican leaders, you that you'd have a lot of Republican leaders. I mean, look what's happened. I mean, the embrace of Russia. I mean, these guys are capable of anything. The Heritage Foundation now is anti Ukraine and pro Russia. The Heritage Foundation is like the Ronald Reagan of think tanks in Washington for Republicans. The fact that they've gone for the enemy means anything's possible. That that's I I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope I hope it you know it goes away as a movement and they go back to being just conservative or whatever. But jeez, you know? It's really scary. It's really scary. Um But it also means these guys are susceptible to fascism and america is not very good at stopping fascism from spreading you know we can't control it our judicial system doesn't seem to be up to it right so that's a that's what i just somebody else comes along and says trump did it and got away with it maybe i should do the same thing you know uh, it's possible certainly possible and the good republicans yeah the good republicans are leaving right they've left the house more are leaving because they've kind of had it with all this stuff, you know? Um, I don't know, magical, I don't know. We'd have to read an hour. I don't know what the possible punishments are for the hush money case. I don't know. I mean, is that what you mean or what? I don't know what the, I don't know what the sentence is or whatever. Um, you mean, will voters care? I mean, supposedly voters say they would care if Trump were convicted of something. Supposedly. But I mean, at this point... At this point, I mean, come on, right? Anybody, anybody who says I'm still for Trump, but if he got convicted, then I would, I would have an epiphany and realize maybe this guy's not such a great guy. If you're in that position now, I'm not convinced there's anything that Trump could do that would turn you against him. If you still support him today, you're gone. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't believe the court case will make a difference. Ever. Now, what the court cases might help is, and this is going to be interesting for the election, is, you know, Biden, whatever. I, I don't quite understand the distaste of Biden. I don't, I mean, I don't love Biden, but he's fine. The economy is doing great. Inflation was bad. Inflation's normal now. The economy is doing better than it's been in five decades. Unemployment is now the lowest consistently that it has been since the 1960s. But we like to pretend like Biden's a bad president. So we all go, Biden's a bad president. Um, you know, because of abortion and, and because of the fact that it's Trump, I think there's enough people who understand how bad Trump is and the abortion issue especially has got a lot of people pretty freaked out um, because the Republicans, you know, got rid of Roe v. Wade <laughs> and have been banning abortions left and right in America. Um, that That's a wild card as far as what what effect that's going to have on the election, you know. Um, so we'll see, you know. Yeah, and because he's old, which is, I mean, yeah, but which is ridiculous, you know. I'm going to go for the guy who tried to overthrow the government because the other guy's old. It's like, okay. I don't like that Biden's old, but... Well, I know you're fine. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Huh? The dog is whining for attention. She was doing this during the eclipse, which was kind of wild. She was not happy during the eclipse. Eh. Yeah. Um, the wigs? I don't know. I don't know enough about the wigs anymore to even know what it would mean to bring them back. That's a little before... Isn't that 100 years? How long ago was the wigs... 120 years, you know? 
Trump's not much younger and he's not in great help. No, no. But Biden comes across as being old. Trump doesn't. I mean, Trump doesn't come across nearly as old as Biden does. I mean, hey, stop. What are you doing? Jeez, stop. Come on up if you want. You want to go in there? She wants to play. Of course you want to play. Oh, my God. Of course she does. Um, she wants to. No, not right now. In a minute. OK, we'll play in a minute. I brought her toys with. We tried earlier today. She wouldn't play with them, of course, because she's gotten spoiled on her toys. She only wants the toys the neighbor has. Thank you. All right, she's on her chair now. Yeah, I guess you guys, you guys can see. The other one's a little harder. There, she's she's moving into her chair there. There we go. Um, well, I mean, Trump gave a funny sword for justice says, I saw Trump wants to make abortion a state's only issue. Trump did a little fast one today. He gave this like mini statement about abortion and said something about it's going to be a state's rights issue. Well, all he's doing is restating the current law. When Trump appointed the conservative judges that got rid of Roe v. Wade, what that did was it got rid of the federal protections for abortion rights so that you no longer the right to an abortion was no longer protected at the federal level. And states could just go and ban it left and right. And like 20 states did. They just banned it totally. Um, by Trump saying, I'm for states' rights and states can decide, all he's doing really is repeating what the current law is. Thank you, Paulius, for the gift. All he's doing is repeating what the current law is, which is, yeah, the states are deciding. Um, you know, it's interesting for him to say he's, at least maybe it means currently, he doesn't want to get into the issue of, of what the federal law should be. Now, I will say one thing Trump's statement said, which was fascinating about abortion, it, and I can't grab it. But, well, I mean, I could, I, well, I can, let me grab this. Let me grab this. I thought it was kind of a fascinating statement. Hold on. Trump, let me pull this up. Trump abortion statement. We do this too. We talk about U.S. politics overall. Um, let me pull, let me pull this. Hold on. Um, see if I can find the, um, um, dee, 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 dee. Okay, the New York Times is doing quotes. Basically, they need to pull the whole quote up because the whole quote is rather fascinating. Trump basically says, I'm not going to take a position in this statement because we've got to win elections. And if I take a position, we're not going to win the election. Um, we're, it's, it was an amazing statement. Um, oh, come on. I'm not going to find the statement now. I read it was it was a much longer statement. And they're not giving the long statement. They're giving the little paragraph from it. The longer statement was just that, that he said, basically, we're not going to win elections if we if we stake out a position now, which I think is a bit cowardly because like either either have a position or don't. But you don't say I'm OK with abortion <laughs> because I don't want to say I'm not because then I'd lose the election. Like, well, which one is it? You know what I mean? Um I can't find this. Yeah, I can't find the quote. Nah, I can't find the quote. Okay. Oh well, it's in my it's in my Twitter. Oh, well, it's on my Twitter account. Yeah, I'll look for it later. Um. Anyway, after he wins, all bets are he already Trump Trump deleted the right to an abortion. The, the the protection for abortion in our country is gone because of Donald Trump. Trump ran to get rid of it, and he got rid of it. I mean. I, I don't the the notion and only Trump could pull off. Oh, he's going to be a moderate now. Really, <laughs> really. The guy literally destroyed the protection for your right to an abortion. He it's out the window. It's gone. It's gone. 20 states have banned abortion now because of Donald Trump. And he's now pretending like oh, I'm moderate. I'm moderate. He's not moderate. He's the reason this whole problem IVF in vitro fertilization. The hospital that was part of the that that lawsuit and everything, the big controversy a couple months ago, just came out and said they're no, they're no longer doing in vitro fertilization at all. The story came up last week because of this because of the Republicans, uh, this whole lawsuit they did of of um, people suing the hospital for uh, or an in vitro clinic for accidentally you know breaking the the test tubes that had the embryos in them, and they said they were people. And the Supreme Court of Alabama said, you're right, you know, because the Roe v. Wade case that got struck down. What's the case that struck down Roe v. Wade? I'm forgetting now the name of it. That case showed us, basically, they said that embryos are people. And so now one of the biggest players, one of the hospitals doing in vitro fertilization in Alabama says, we're not doing uh, in vitro fertilization anymore. 
you know Dobbs thank you Dobbs thank you Beastmaster yep Dobbs um, no it's crazy absolutely crazy uh, yeah I mean Susan I would agree look I'm not thrilled with Biden and on immigration look I'm not thrilled with Democrats and immigration now I will say I don't think Trump did a hell of a lot on immigration, to be honest, either. He never built the wall. His big thing was build the wall. He never built the wall. <laughs> I think it was a dumb idea anyway. But but Trump's ideas, but then he did the weird stuff like the Muslim ban that I think was just obnoxious, right? Um, Democrats, I think, are bad on immigration. They are. They are. Democrats are owned by the left wing of the party on immigration, and they're afraid to stand up and say, this is ridiculous. We've got millions of people crossing the border every year. And I agree with you on that. But on everything else, uh, you know, on the economy... Democrats have been better. I mean, well, forget it now. The economy is doing great under Biden. Um, the, um, you know, foreign policy. Well, look, Trump would be war. I mean, Biden's, you know, Biden gets a B on for a B minus. Now I'm getting worse, but Trump would be a disaster on foreign policy compared to Biden. Um, you know, on a lot of the social issues I care about, it's Biden. Abortion, civil rights, all that kind of stuff is Biden. Um, you know, I, it's, you know, so I mean, I hear you. I just would think, and well, and the democracy stuff that actually matters to me most of all. Oh, the economy's Andrew. The economy's doing great everywhere. No, that's that is that is just a wives' tale. And I know for Democrats running for office, they've got to feel your pain because voters don't listen. But the economy, go pick up the Wall Street Journal and read how the seriously and read how the economy's doing. I mean, just read any of the experts. It doesn't matter if you yourself aren't doing well, because that isn't relevant to how the economy is doing nationwide. We don't we don't live in communism. Individual people will have, you know, bad jobs, no jobs, be unemployed. There's always gonna be some unemployment. So that's not how you judge. But the economy overall is doing ridiculously well. We have the strongest economy in fifty years. If anything, by the way, the reason we had inflation, the economy is doing too well. That's one of the reasons we had inflation. I mean, there is just zero. You know, it just it's. And I mean, I'm not running for office, so I don't have to lie and pretend like, ha ha, you know. Oh, I feel your pain. The economy it must hurt. No, no, this is a great economy. A couple of years ago, by the way, in the last couple of years, there were so many jobs that wages went through the roof. They couldn't find people to work right? Restaurants. My God, I remember uh, when we just came out of COVID, going to like one of our favorite local restaurants and asking them, they couldn't get wait staff. They couldn't get people to work in the restaurant because people were getting jobs elsewhere. Mom's guy who does her lawn had to stop doing his job because all the kids he hires were getting so much money everywhere else that they stopped doing lawn jobs in high school and college. They wouldn't, they wouldn't work for him. They wanted $25 an hour and more and he goes, he goes, I don't make $25 an hour. I can't do this. So like the economy, there is zero question. But again, Democrats, Democrats are weak and Democrats play this game where, oh, you know, a lot of voters don't think the economy is doing well. So we have to, we have to be nice and we don't, we aren't going to stand up to them and go, you're out of your mind about the economy not doing well. And I'm sorry, but at some point, and this is like the Trump thing too. We don't want to stand up to people and go, you're out of your mind if you think this guy's okay after everything he did. He's proven to you who he is, you know? And if, no, the inflation was bad. The inflation was bad, and I'm pissed about inflation, yes, because the inflation went up too much, and frankly, the companies took advantage. I, I always go about Amy's. Amy's, that frozen food thing, I won't touch them ever again. They totally jacked their prices like 25, 30%. It's ridiculous how much they raised their prices. I won't touch those people for now because of the way they raise their prices. So some of that kind of stuff, yeah. I won't buy that stuff unless it's half price, you know? Um, so that's true. That's true. Uh, here, we, Andrew is a troll. Okay, I knew it. I knew it. Mods, mute him. How much money are we sending to Ukraine? The guy who claimed the economy wasn't doing well, now that, that my friends, was a, was a paid troll. That was not a real person. Do you, but do you see what I mean? We talked at the beginning of the show about how the Russian, a uh, big Washington Post article on the Russian trolls and how they come and they talk about why are we spending our money abroad on Ukraine when things are so bad here at home? That was Andrew's talking point. And he pivoted from the economy is doing terribly and, and we were like, where did that come from? And the next thing out of his mouth, by the way, we aren't, we aren't even talking about, we haven't talked about Ukraine for the last half hour. Where did, where did he pull Ukraine from? 
That's that's by the way how you know he was a troll. That was a fake account. That he wasn't a, he was a real person, but he was a fake. Because literally, we're talking about the economy and everything, and all of a sudden he switches to why are we giving you know we shouldn't give any money to Ukraine? Where did that come from? That was fake. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing too. That's actually Tyrion's makes a very good point. Inflation went up horribly in the U.S. Guess where it went up even worse? Everywhere else in the world. It's because of COVID and the post-COVID economy that everything went crazy. The U.S., Biden, has kept inflation so much lower than what it went in the rest of the world. Employment, so much better in the U.S. than anywhere in the world. I mean, again, and this is also, this is also the fault of, of, um, of, of Democrats again. Because Democrats don't want to stand up and go, you know what? Inflation was bad. But A, happened because of COVID. Guess why? Because of COVID. I got, you know, one word for you about who was in charge to let COVID get out of control. It wasn't Joe Biden, right? So yeah, the COVID disaster led to high inflation. Second of all, Biden took over and guess what he did? He kept inflation under control and he tamed inflation. Inflation is now fixed for all intents and purposes. The prices went up and now, but they're, you know, they're, uh, they're stuck because that's what happens once they go up, but they're not going up anymore. They're up 3% a year, which is pretty much where you, almost where you want. You want them at 2%, but that's still pretty good. Um, but, you know, well, those are, well, Jason, correct. They're, they're Republican talking points because they're Russian talking points. That's the thing. The whole Washington Post article today was about how the, the, and actually, and the Republican head of the Foreign Affairs Committee this weekend talking about how the Republican talking points have taken over the base of the Republican. They've in fact, they literally use the word infected, the, the head of the Republican, uh, the, the House, the Republican head of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, that that Russian, that the Russian propaganda has infected the base of the Republican Party. You know? It's crazy. But yeah, the Biden thing too, the border, correct. Biden finally gave in on the border stuff and Republicans said no because Donald Trump made them kill it. Trump didn't want them to sign a border deal because that's Trump's big issue for the election. So Republicans quite literally killed a deal to help close off the border. It's like, and again, by the way, when's the last time you heard a Democrat talking about that? Guys, remember that border deal got killed like two months ago. Wouldn't you think, in a, I mean, this, I'm telling you, Democrats like deserve to lose. They, they, they earn it. What if imagine if Democrats like killed a border deal and that was the big issue everyone cared about? Republicans would be nonstop telling you about how Democrats killed the deal. The Republicans killed the border deal two or three months ago. Trump ordered them to kill it and they did it. I mean, it was all public. You think Democrats might mention that every single day that the reason we've got a problem at the border is because Donald Trump killed the deal, the bipartisan deal that a conservative Republican, Jim Langsford, came up with, who's the conservative Republican from Oklahoma senator, right? You should be mentioning that every single day. Trump is the reason the border's open. But Biden won't do that. No, Dem Democrats suck at this. They really do. They've always sucked at messaging. I don't know what it is. I mean, they deserve to lose, except, of course, they don't, because then, you know, you get Trump, <laughs> you know? But it's just ridiculous. I mean... You know, anyway, anyway, all right, guys, we're at like 23 after. I think I'm going to call it quits. Let me do a quick recap of the news. Um, do make sure to go and check out our auctions on Discord. Uh, the auctions end on Wednesday. They were a little shorter this week from Friday to Wednesday. There's some really good stuff. Like I said, I've got a lot of cool stuff in from Ukraine. So go and check those things out, guys. Remember, half the money goes to Ukraine, half the money goes to me since I do this full time. Thank you, Luis. Speaking of which, Luis just got me the really cool new compass thing on uh, TikTok. Thank you, my friend. Um, so, uh, yeah, do check out the auctions. Like I said, they end on Wednesday. A lot of cool stuff. I mean, there's going to be, I, I actually, I took pictures of them all. So I've got a lot of really cool stuff for the next uh, four weeks that I'm going to, even when I'm in Asia, I'm going to post new auction stuff up, some really cool stuff. All right, let me do the quick recap of the news here. Um, Washington Post uh, said today that Trump has privately said he could end Russia's war in Ukraine by pressuring Ukraine to give up some territory, reportedly Crimea and the Donbass. Trump then came out and said, that's not true. But you know. Um, a Russian missile ship was set on fire near Kaliningrad within uh, Russia's province in, in Europe. Uh, the Ukrainian military intelligence made the claim, which means Ukrainians are more or less taking credit for it, which is fascinating because it's very far away from home. 
Uh, Molotov cocktails were thrown at the Russian embassy in Lithuania. Um, a number of Ukrainian military officers uh, are basically saying that they're very worried. Uh, they told Politico they're very worried of a possible Russian breakthrough in some of the front lines this summer. Um, U.S. aid. Oh, I didn't mention this. U.S. aid is delayed again. Remember we were talking about how um, the Speaker of the House, the Republican, said, oh, we're going to have a vote on Ukraine aid this week when they come back from Easter. Looks like it's now weeks away is the quote. The vote isn't going to happen for weeks now. Big surprise because the MAGA Republicans at Donald Trump's request don't want aid to go to Ukraine. And big surprise, they're killing it again. So um, Switzerland is looking to host a global peace summit on Russia's war against Ukraine in mid-June. Um, I then talked about Representative Mike McCall, who is the head of the House Foreign Affairs Committee who uh, told reporters in the U.S. that he thinks Russian propaganda has made its way into the U.S. and it's infected a good chunk of the party base. Um, there was a new Washington Post article on Russian propaganda that I read just some quotes from that was really interesting because it basically shows how the Russian trolls are you know, in detail um, uh, creating fake uh, posts on social media but literally to the point of you know okay you're going to be an american from a suburb and like all this kind of detail they give the the fake account to put out there um zaporizhia nuclear plant something might be going on we don't know the russians claim the ukrainians attacked it that's a that's just generally a lie um the ukrainians say it didn't happen and there's no reason to believe it did because the russians do not have a record of telling the truth on any of this stuff um so you know who knows we do know the russians control the nuclear plant so if they control it i'd be more willing to be, you know to believe that they did something wrong um reuters reports that the russians have asked kazakhstan to send gasoline because the russians are running low on gas because the ukrainians are blowing up the refineries that's good news um, and finally, two dozen soldiers, German soldiers, hello, we'll play in a moment, uh, departed from Berlin on Monday to Lithuania, the first uh, German military base abroad since World War II. They're going to build in Lithuania, 5,000 troops. It'll open in 2027, so that's good news. And my dog wants to play. We will play in a moment, even though I know you. You're going to... Yeah? Oh, oh, go get it, go get it! All right. There we go. And I threw it, and what happened... She then went, eh. <laughs> and now she's now she's begging at me for something else. Dog, what do you want me to do for you? I can't keep doing this. That one? Oh, the yeah, okay, the yellow one works. We have we have different colored toys. Okay, one second and we'll play. All right. The yellow one works. So we we've got we have luck here. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm gonna sign off. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, six o'clock Eastern Time US. That's Washington DC time. And I will be here through Thursday. Thursday night's probably my last show for two weeks because then I head for Asia. I'm actually heading for Asia Thursday night, but I'll do a show for you guys anyway, most likely. Thank you, Jorge. Um, and thank you, Linka, for the gift. Or Link Link AKA. And um, excuse me, I'll see you guys tomorrow night. All right. So do check out the auctions over on Discord. And otherwise... Oh, and we got the money, by the way. We, we finished raising the money this weekend for the hospital in Ukraine. We were raising uh, $1,300 for a hospital to get them sheets, blankets, and pillowcases. We were buying the fabric that... Um, Basically, volunteers in Ukraine, Vlad's mother was one of them, are now volunteering to cut and make into the blankets and sheets and pillows for the hospital. But we raised all the money this weekend. So we've got our $1,300. 100% of it went to the hospital, or to the fabric, I should say, to buy the stuff for the hospital. We didn't take any of it as promised. So that was so thank you all for doing that. Yeah, we, we, we sort of did the final amount during our Saturday show for our paid subscribers. So thank you all. That was very good. All right, guys. Let's talk next uh, tomorrow. I'll be back at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, U.S. tomorrow. Have a good evening, all. All right? All right, have a good night, guys.